Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we'll be showing you how to create a Casa OS um, server. Um, Casa OS, I'm hoping I say that correctly because I actually don't know how to say it, but it's C A S A O S. Um, it is kind of like they kind of develop it to kind of make it your all-in-one kind of, you know, server that you can use to, you know, spin up Docker containers, spin up your thing apps, and kind of a centralized place to kind of manage everything um, from, from that app. So essentially, like, in all my videos, I've always spun up one server, uh, individual for each service. In this case, this, you spin up this, and it will, you can essentially install all those services on that and then kind of just run it from there. So I wanted to show you guys because I thought it was really neat. Um, I don't know if I'm going to use it or not, but it seemed really cool and really fun to interact with. So this video is also sponsored by me, myself, and I. So if you enjoy my video, want to sponsor me or send me some free Swagger hardware, my email is in the description below. So let's get started, guys. All right. So what we will do is actually start off with setting up the DNS. Um, so we will update our DNS and um, Casa OS in a a and one forty one. Uh, don't forget to update the serial. Update that and Casa OS. Okay, so now that we have that, we can log in to our system. And try it at one seven two one six one forty one. So the one thing to note um, about this, which is slightly different than all the other installs that I have done, um, is this is actually running Ubuntu twenty two oh four dot two. The reason for this is um, there is an install script that is, you essentially run, and you. It doesn't work on real. It, this is the supported operating system that they suggest. So um, we're gonna use it um, because I tried to install on on a Oracle Linux box and it did not work. I can tell you that. Um, so it's a simple, easy, elegant personnel something and yeah, DNS. There you go. It's like your personal cloud OS essentially. So what we'll do is go through the install, which will get, curl the the script that we we'll need and run the install here. Um, so this will take a few minutes, so um, don't sweat it. But I'll show you guys kind of how it looks, what to kind of expect. But essentially, it's kind of like your all-in-one cloud situation where um, you can. There are already self-hosted apps in here, um, which is essentially just Docker files with containers for like AdGuard, PyHole, Plex, um, all your stuff. But the interesting thing is also you can create your like own. Um, from a container too. So like if they don't have it um, in there to just like click and install, you can actually go in and set it up, pick the Docker image, pick the thing that you need and whatnot. So um, this is kind of just a nice centralized place. Um, and I think that's what they were trying to go for, honestly, um, that you can use and access and, you know, set up some more services that you need without needing to know how to you know, build virtual machines. You can see it's just kind of like an apps page where you can download the app, which is really a, a Docker file that runs the container. Um, and I mean, it's it's pretty slick, honestly, in my opinion. You can see the performance of the machine and whatnot. So um, this is more for, say, for example, you want to do this on a bare metal, like you have a old gaming desktop and whatnot. This is something that I would recommend to install if you don't want to try to focus on doing like a hypervisor like Proxmox or VMware. Um, this is this is more up your alley. I would kind of recommend this over doing hypervisor stuff if you're not wanting to do hypervisor stuff, right? Um, so it will go through the install, it'll download all the packages that it needs, it'll download um, Docker because it, it'll, it's going to actually run Docker containers in this. Um, so we, and we're going to show you how it actually on the back end, you know, see Docker containers as we install things. Um, so that's still installing. But yeah, I mean, honestly, there is a lot to it on it, uh, which I was kind of like surprised because I've never heard of this until I like start looking at uh, the self-hosted page. Um, so you can see how there's a lot of apps in here. Um, you can also do the command line interface so you can actually log into your terminal of this machine um, instead of needing to SSH, which is pretty slick too. Um, so you can just kind of run from there. I kind of wish it was a little bit bigger, but I guess you can full screen it here. Um, 
but yeah, then you can manage files, manage app, um, you can add new disks and stuff like that. So now that we have it up, we'll show you here. Um, Casa OS and give me a second. Oh, Casa OS dragon dot local. Okay, yeah, so it's just on HTTP. Um, so we'll create our account. Dragon. And we are good to go. So, um, sure. Um, so essentially, you still get the same dashboard that we saw in our previous page. Um, the big thing about this is kind of going to the apps store. And so you can see, you essentially got a list of apps that you can use and pretty much install. So like we set up an uptime Kuma um, instance before. So essentially you could do that here too. You just hit install here and it will install. And once it's done installing, you can click it and it's kind of like a single sign on type situation. It'll just direct you to that. So we'll let that continue in the background. Um, other things in here, um, I think Portainer, that's what I actually want to, to download to install to show you. Um, P Oh, is it not in here? I thought it was in here. I thought Portana was in here. Oh, it might not be. I somehow got on my other one, but that's okay. Um, but you can install like Pi-Hall, um, and it'll tell you like, if there's like a login, you can t it'll tell you what the default password is essentially too. Um, so like, for example, like this, this won't work because we're already listening on port 53, right? On, on the host itself. Um, so like you would have to do like, 54 or something, right? You'd have to do a unique port. So if you have applications that overlap IPs, you would need to do unique ports for it to work essentially. Um, so that's that's one thing to consider uh, because that will be slightly different um, than a few things that you might be looking at essentially. Um, so, but you can see that there's just a lot of apps that by default you can just hit install and will install but you can also do custom installs where you can select hey this is docker image this is the app name you want you can set a custom url uh, icon url if you want and then where the web gui goes to essentially uh forward you to which i will show you here in a little bit and then you can also decide how it networks whether it's from host or bridge um and then add the ports so like how we had the ports before so the host port with versus the container port so this kind of like visualizes how to do it in a container for like a Docker Docker Compose, but in, in a GUI essentially. Um, and then you got restart policies and other things. Um, so for example, like if we wanted to open PyHole, you can see PyHole opened up on 80 or 8800 and you we knew the password was Kaza OS because that's what they told us it was going to be. So now I have PyHole set up in this um, and essentially I didn't have to install Docker because Docker was installed with Casa OS um, build script. And you can just essentially run it from here. And it's kind of easy because you don't even need to remember the URL because everything will be from the Casa OS box and it'll just redirect on a different port essentially. Um, so same thing with like Uptime Kuma, you can set up your, your thing, run Uptime Kuma and this runs on 3001. So essentially it's just kind of like you're all, all in one where you can just set up all your Docker stuff um, and run from this application. Um, granted, if you have enough resources, if you don't have enough resources, it doesn't work, <laughs> right? Um, so, but there's a lot of apps in the app store and if you can't find your app, you can do a custom app um, because essentially it's just pick your Docker and let it run essentially. So, well, there you go, guys. That is how you install Kazo OS. If you, like the if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, or subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.